Katya, you are late by 20 seconds. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Hello, dear friends. Hello, Dr. Kausuba Dezikachar. We are so sorry. We are 20 minutes late. We were chatting. 20 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds. Uh, sorry, 20 seconds late, we were chatting and realizing it's already 11 o'clock. So, uh, dear friends, warm me welcome on today's interview. Just uh, 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 tell us in the comments uh, if everything is okay, you can see us and hear us. Thank you very much, Erika and Lenka. Hello, Aureli. Uh, how are you, my dear friends? And how are you, Dr. Kaustuba Dezikachar? Are you okay? Because we saw a very mysterious and strange post on social media about free lions. We were worried you were be, you were eaten, you were like wounded or something by these lions. Do you still have legs and arms? <laughs> <laughs> I do have more than legs and arms. I'm so happy and energized by the three lions. So I'm really, really very happy. Yeah, so is there, is that okay or? Hello, we, we, okay, you are okay, but what, what is the post about? Did you see the three lions or did you buy a shirt with three lions on? No, 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 no. No. no, 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 I don't. I don't do shopping today. No, no. I, actually, a few nights ago, I had a very fascinating dream where there were like golden lions appearing in my dream. Wow. Two of them, at least, uh, and they were playing with each other. And I felt that it was kind of like an invitation for me. And uh, when I wake up, I decided that I had to visit the temples of Lord Narasimha, who is the lion god. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there are many temples, but there is a special one, a uh, special set of three that is actually built some hun few hundred years ago when they didn't have all these global positioning satellites and things like that. But so fascinating that these three temples are separated at least one hour from each other by car driving. Mm -hmm. But yet, the geographical, geographical map, they are perfectly aligned. So you can draw a straight line through these temples because they're very powerful energy centers. So this morning I wake up at uh, three o'clock and started my journey to visit these three temples. And I returned home after about 11 hours. I barely made it to this interview, Katya. And uh, thanks to Google, I, miss, I almost missed it because three times Google mislead the navigation to some wrong place. And each time cost me a lot of time, about 20, 25 minutes. So I almost missed this interview because of Google. You see, even with the, with the global positioning, today we are so wrong. But in the ancient times, without those kind of maps, they were able to make perfect calculations. That was the brilliance of those people in those days. So there is the three lions. I've been very fortunate and blessed. So I actually don't have uh, any injuries from these lions, actually. Uh, I have been nourished by these lions with all of you to talk about this very, very difficult topic, which I have no experience in. Well, we are very grateful you are okay, and we are very grateful that you came back on time. Otherwise, I don't know what will would be happening. Uh, probably, I don't know. I cannot imagine. I will. I will choose maybe Amanda or Valerie or Shri or Rani or Sarah or Cheryl, and we would then just talk about the mothers, yeah, and about the uh, our topic today. Uh, but first, uh, let's. Let's introduce ourselves for all those who uh, don't know us and who don't know uh, Dr. Uh, Kastuba de Zikachar and myself. So uh, Dr. Kastuba and Zikachar is from India, from Chennai. Yes, this is good. This is correct. So uh, he is uh, a holder of uh, V yoga tradition, yoga therapy tradition. He's a yoga teacher. And he's also the uh, spiritual mentor and our spiritual teacher. And we are conducting these interviews now since March 
2020, I think we are going like uh, uh, crazy with these interviews, you know, like like a rocket crazy. Very good. We have a lot of uh, very good feedback from you that we are grateful. And I'm Katia Ucic. I am also yoga therapist. Uh, I'm a student of Dr. Kaustuba Desi Kachar. I'm a yoga teacher. I am a coach uh, with uh, knowledge of Carl Gustav Jung's psychology that we will use also today a little bit. And uh, I am also a therapist uh, for gifted and expressive art therapist, which is also very interesting. So, uh let's start with the topic today so uh Shri already said what a wonderful topic but uh so we decided today to talk about the universal mother the great mother archetypes so the energy that we are all connected to and it can help us also in the practical way and we are going to reveal some secrets regarding that and also we are going to put it in practical life which i think it's really really very important to to have a practical uh, tools and practical advices so but a small disclaimer first for all of you from us we both are not mothers so dr kaskuba you are not a mother yeah <laughs> no. i can never be a mother at least you have a chance still <laughs> oh my gosh probably not still but i'm also not a mother i love children very much and they love me back but and i use this motherly energy for all my uh, people around me and my clients and my friends and so on so also for you guys yeah so um but first let's let's start with the chant and uh, uh kasuba what kind of beautiful chant did you choose today for us okay before we go to the chant just to put it out there like you said we are not mothers Surely, I cannot be a mother, literally, but I don't know if it qualifies because some of my students, especially some from China and Korea uh, in Japan, have said that um, I'm like their grandmother. And I think grandmother is a mother. That's why she's a grandmother. So I don't know if that qualifies. So I'm kind of a semi-grandmother, at least energetically, if not literally. Yeah. So anyway, I'm putting it out there. But I don't have experience of being a biological mother, and I don't think I will have. Uh, that's a privilege that I don't feel. Uh, that's a privilege I don't feel I will have in this life. Perhaps I've had it in the past, and perhaps I will have it in the future. Who knows? Yeah. The chant I'm going to choose is called Chatushloki. It's a very beautiful chant about the universal mother, which is called Goddess Shri. Great. You know, Shri is the name of the universal goddess mother. Um, and it's called Shri Chatushloki. It's four verses composed by a great uh, Acharya called Yamun Acharya, one of our ancestors, who is actually Nathamuni's grandson. So I'll do this for you, a chant that honors the Shri. Shri Chatushloki Khan Namah Panipate Shayasanam Vahanam Vedatma Vihageshwaro Yavanika Maya Chagan Mohini Brahm Heshadis Suravrajas Sadaitas Tvadasa Dasi Ganaha Shri Ritti Vachana Mate Bhagavati Bruma Katantwam Vayam Yas Yasti Mahimana Matmana Ivatvad Vallabho Pe Prabhu Nalam Matumiyataya Niravadhin Nityanu Pulam Swataha Tan tuan dasa iti prapanna iti chastoshmyam yahan nirbhaya 
लोकैकेश्वरी लोकनाथ दयिते दाते दयांते विदन्न ये शुणा निरीक्षण सुधा संधुक्षण द्रक्षते नष्ट प्राक्तलाभतस्त्रिभुवन संप्रत्यनोदय श्रेय नरविंदोचन मन का प्रसादृते संसृत्यक्षर वैष्णवाधसुण संभाव्य कर्चि शाता महाविभूति परम यद्रह्म हरे मूर्त ब्रह्म तथोपि तत्तर रूप यदुत यथासुखम विहरत रूपाणि सर्वाणि तानि आहुस्वैरूप विभवैर्गाढ़ोपगूा ते आकारत्रय संपन्ना अरविंद निवासिनी अशेष जगदीशित्री वंदे वरद वल्लभाश्लोक सो Thank you very much. Namaste. Beautiful. Namaste. So we are warmly welcoming all our uh, supporters and those who are listening. So we already say hi to Rani, Leticia, hello Maria, Sirisha, Kiran, hello, and Shaila Jai is with us also. Hello. So, Actually, yesterday Shaila Jha got the new title Amma Ji, which means the Great Mother. Oh my gosh! Really, Amma Ji, the the new and uh, future Amma Ji of the world. Oh, congratulations, Shaila Jha! I'm I'm sure uh, it feels great. Congratulations! And she is also a mother to two wonderful, wonderful sons. Yes, yes, I saw on Facebook many times. Great, we are so proud of you. Yeah, brava. I don't know how you get this. But <laughs> probably it's a whole procedure and years of studying or something like that. Or how is it? No, no. Yesterday she was titled by a very famous Indian guy who is the head of a wisdom foundation. He called her Amaji, and so it stuck. Oh, like that. Okay. The next okay. Amaji. <laughs> oh, she didn't post a very nice uh, emoji for you, Kastuba. <laughs> Actually, the word "ayo" means an exclamation of wonder, like "ayo, so great." Ah, okay, but it looks like it, uh, uh, it looks like little angry, <laughs> angry guy. Oh yes, and a heart. I got a heart. Uh, so, okay, uh, dear friends, today we are going to talk about the universal mother energy and we are going to put it very nicely into the, today modern, today's modern time. We are going to talk also about different aspects uh, of this energy. So stay with us, uh, be open. Uh, it is something that maybe you heard for the first time or something that you didn't realize, but it's very good to, to have this, uh, let's say, inner knowing and to have this information about all these energies around us and what is going on in us, yeah? So, uh, Kausto, does the energy of universal mother exists 
Hey, this was not the first question you sent me. Okay, you're throwing me off. Right. Of course, the universal energy of the even check. <laughs> of course, the energy of the universal mother is existing. Because one of the great qualities of the mother is the creation of life. So that's why she is called a mother, the one who is able to create life form. And so obviously there exists this universal energy of the mother because this universe where we are living in is full of life. And it all came from different, let's say, aspects of the mother, which are all connected in my view to the universal mother. And in this way, the divine is a feminine energy, a very strong feminine energy. Especially in our tradition, the, we call it Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, which is the male and the female together. We cannot remove the feminine energy. And that's what uh, I chanted in the beginning. It is the chant for the universal mother energy, the mother of all mothers, the mothership as you can call. Mm -hmm. That is the powerful energy through which we are all born. We are all nourished. And we will probably finally reach as well. And I think this is a very important uh, mother energy that we have to honor. And that's why we call this nature, the universe, the earth, mother earth, Bhumi Devi, we call it in Sanskrit, which I think has been very appropriately translated into English as mother earth. It's not the father earth, it's the mother earth. Because it's the earth that is the source of all life, at least in the world we are living in. So definitely the universal mother exists, at least in an energetic form, uh, if not in a physical form. But maybe she is in a physical form, but we are not seeing it as we all have different levels of perception and different kinds of perception. Yes, and what are the qualities of the, this energy? Can we, let's say, grasp these qualities? I'm for sure you have many, yeah. All in India, a very simple word uh, sound describes mother, ma. So we call ma Durga, ma Shakti, ma Lakshmi, ma Saraswati, or Saraswati, ma Lakshmi, ma, etc. Ma means mother. And it's a very profound word. Ma is the root of the syllable uh, of the word pramana, which means complete and full understanding. So one of the first, what we call global archetypes, if you want to call it or characters of the mother is full understanding, is understanding of what the child is going through. Not necessarily why it's going through, but what it's going through. And I see this even today as an adult in my 40s. And uh, <laughs> I live with my mother like Jesus did with his mother. And there are moments where I'm just lying down in my, in my couch. And then my mother comes and in Tamil she is asking, Nada, Nache, which literally translates to, hey, what happened? And I try to not bother her because I know she's having her own problems. So I just say, oh, nothing. I'm okay, I'm fine. And then immediately she says, no, I know you're lying. You're not feeling well. Instantly. Not feeling well. So there's that complete understanding of what I'm feeling. Now, why I'm not feeling well? Maybe she doesn't know. Maybe it's because India lost the cricket. Maybe it's some other reason. That is why. But at least what I am feeling, she knows fully well. And I've seen this with many, many mothers that I have had the great privilege to interact with so many of my students or mothers. And they understand their child very well, at least what they are feeling. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the cry of a child, even when the child, before it starts speaking, whether the cry of the child is for a diaper change or whether it's for sleeping time or whether it's because the child is hungry, 
the mother knows the differences between the different cries of the child. Many fathers don't know this. I didn't know this with my child, but the mother knew. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. For me, the simple solution was always to give an ice cream to Shraddha, whatever, whenever she cried, that was my solution. I didn't care what she was crying for or what was going on. I gave her an ice cream, she shut up. This was my solution because I'm a father. I don't have that mother's quality, which is able to understand the child very well. But that's not the only quality. There are at least three different dimensions of the mother. One is the creation and the nourishment. Creation is one, that's Ma Saraswati. Mm -hmm. Creation is not just creation in a biological form, but creation of the child into its character. It's the mother who educates the child about the character first. Mother is the first teacher. Yes. So Saraswati is the goddess of knowledge. So that's why she's Ma Saraswati. So when the mother is educating the child, she is Saraswati. But the mother is also nourishing the child. Nourishment is a very important attribute of the mother. Mother nourishes, father protects, father is provider. In traditional Indian archetype, of course, modern yeah. society has changed. Has changed. Yes. Mother was the nourisher, and that's why mother is Ma Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the nourisher, the nourishing mother. She is the goddess of wealth. She is the goddess of prosperity. She allows the child to nourish to be nourished in the right way so that its potential will be uh, manifested that's the nourishment the child needs but the mother also is the punisher the punity punity mother not in a bad way but when the child makes errors for example if the child is making a mistake like for example today when i was going to the temple with my cousin She's a grandmother to two very young children. And she was telling me how one child was always beating the other child because it could. The mother comes and corrects the child saying, you can't beat your brother. The father is sitting and laughing, thinking it's funny. But the mother is correcting the child. That role when she's doing, that's Ma Shakti. I'm not joking, Katya. I literally had this conversation an hour ago in the car while I was running to this interview, she was telling me how her grandchildren, two of them, very young boys, are fighting. One is punching the other unnecessarily because he can. And the father is thinking it's funny, but the mother is so sensitive. She's holding the child, looking at the child in the face and saying, you beat your brother one more time and I will have to do the same to you to show you how it feels because your brother is more tiny than you. He's not able to defend himself the same way you're not going to be able to defend yourself from me. So I will have to show you how it feels for your brother. That role, the mother becomes Ma Shakti because we think that punishment is not necessary. I think sometimes it's a correction. It's not to look at punishment with vengeance. The mother is doing it out of love. So I think this would be the three roles the mother takes. And all of these three roles come, in my view, under the umbrella of the archetype character called love. Love is a motherly emotion. Uh, a, a mother's love is very special. It's the unconditional love that we can get if we are lucky to have such mothers. And of course, nowadays we don't because sometimes the mothers are disconnected from these energies, which I think we will talk later. But at least somebody becomes that mother figure when they are able to provide that unconditional. I say that this is how, uh, in a very simple starting point, we can understand this. So the um, you said Saraswati Lakshmi, and then for correction and punishment is which goddess? Ma Shakti or Ma Durga, Ma Shakti. Shakti is the great goddess of power, Parvati, the consort of Shiva. Mm. So actually they are three in one then. In, in the they are not three different people. They're all attributes of the same divine. Yeah. 
So yes, Carol Gustav Jung, uh, 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 a very famous uh, psychoanalytic, psychologist, and so on. He was also uh, working and discovering and learning uh, uh, in India. Uh, so he was also connecting to the Indian uh, culture and so on. And he spoke about archetypes. Yeah, and he actually said that the the great mother is the archetype that is all over the universe in collective uh, unconscious. And the qualities are that you mentioned. He said it's nurturing, fertility, it's uh, providing gentleness, also intuition, wisdom, love, beauty, also healing, and also creativity, the, the possibility to create, to create a, a child, yeah, to have a birth and so on, and create also other creations like yeah, um, baking bread or uh, a painting or a voice. So create creation in every aspect. So we see that this is very, very significant for the existence and the development of uh, humanity. So in ancient times, the people did recognize this and they did cherish this connection to the universal mother. So they felt it inside. Uh, they connected to the, uh, to the nature, they connected to the earth and uh, probably with some rituals, uh, daily rituals or big rituals. So now we are somehow destroying this Mother Earth. We are destroying the nature. Is what have happened in between? So, you know, there is such a big difference. We don't have this connection anymore. Or uh, how will this end? Will the Mother Earth turn turn? cruel back to us or evil even back to us against us oi katya siku sunsku this this is this this is my hometown uh, language hello oliver he knows me uh we were very good friends when i was a student and he said oi katya you are like a sunshine oh. <laughs> Wow! Welcome in this interview, Oliver. So this is this is the uh, the native language, my native language. <laughs> it's the very interesting that he says that because uh, in uh, in Vedic tradition, the sun is also called the mother, Gaia Three. Yes. In the morning, Savitri. In the midday, Saraswati. In the evening, all feminine forms, of, which are very beautiful as well. Anyway. Going back to your question, I think it's very simple. It's a disconnection that has happened. Um, we all are so disconnected from our nature and men are disconnected from their masculine nature. Women are disconnected from their feminine nature. Mothers are disconnected from the motherly attributes. And as a humanity, we are disconnected from human attitudes, human uh, uh, attributes. And that's why we are so sick because we are like i said to you earlier we are punching our brothers and sisters for no reason and that's why mother nature is correcting us why do you think we have this pandemic why do we think we have all these natural fires in the world why do you think we have all these catastrophes that is happening it's mother nature that is trying to teach us a lesson in a punity way because we are punching our brothers and sisters. The animals in this world, the plants in this world, the trees in this world are our brothers and sisters because they come from the same mother, the earth. So if we are children of earth, it's not just human beings who are the children of earth. It's actually the animals, the plants, the insects, the butterflies, everything that comes from the earth is our brother or sister. So if we are punching them, and says, hey, you guys, you are behaving like idiots. You need to be punished. And that is why she's trying to teach us a lesson which we are not willing to learn. So many people say, oh, we are killing the earth. We are killing the earth. So sorry, human beings who think like that. You are so stupid if you think like that because the earth is older than human beings mm -hmm. and will exist even after human beings. Actually, we are killing ourselves by this disconnection. 
So in my view, the way I understand, and I sincerely say that it's my view, people can have a different view. I feel all humanity is nourished, all of the world, not humanity, all beings of the world, is nourished by this mother ship. It's almost like, you know, you watch the Star Wars or Star Trek or things like that. There's a mother ship and then there's little satellite ships that are going independently, doing their own things and then always coming back to the mother ship for charging. That's the universal mother. We have to always, if we kill her, we are not killing her, we are killing us because we are not so powerful to kill her. Yeah. Basically, we're killing our supply. So if we destroy nature, we are not destroying nature, we are destroying ourselves because nature will find its way to rejuvenate itself. All we need to do is step back, we yeah. don't need to fear. Yeah. So that's what has happened. We have disconnected from our fundamental attributes of being human, being motherly, being fatherly, being masculine, being feminine, etc. And we are all trying to be like robots. We all want to be, think about it. Everybody wants the same brand of phone, iPhone. Everybody wants the same brands of clothes. Everybody is forced now to have the same kind of vaccine, the medication. People are not even given a choice. Do you want to try Chinese medicine? Do you want to try Ayurveda? Do you want to try some other homeopathy. No, everybody is forced to take the same damn kind of medicine. So basically, what are we doing? We are making everybody into robots, which means we are dehumanizing ourselves. And that is why we are so screwed up in modern society, because we are removing all these beautiful attributes of what it is to be a human, what it is to be a mother, what it is to be a father, what it is to be an uncle or an auntie even. We are removing all this. We all want to be like the same robot. And that's the problem. Even computers, we just have three systems, Linux, Apple, Microsoft. We don't have a variety. Exactly. You know, with the phone, we have Android, we have iOS, and we have Windows, Nokia, that nobody really uses anymore. Yeah. It's going down, but we just have two options, which are basically in bed with each other. So they're basically one option in two different. One option, yeah. So exactly. we don't even have that sensitivity anymore. And whether we are from India or Europe or America or China, we are all one. We are all expected to be of the, follow the same rules, for wear the same kind of fashion. We are desensitizing ourselves, yeah. and I think that is the problem with humanity and that is the problem with many mothers which is that they don't want to be the mother they want to be the father they want to be the successful fa career father they want to be the successful profession it's very few mothers who can manage both because both being a mother takes a lot of energy yeah. having a career takes a lot of energy so if you're giving double energy what are you going to get in return because we need to nourish ourselves mm -hmm. because nobody can sustain without a feedback Yes, exactly. You can't only suck energy from somebody like our mother and give nothing back to the mother. We have to give something back to the mother. So the same way we can't suck resources from this earth, we have to give something back to this earth. Are you planting some plants? Are you being kind to some animals? Are you at least not throwing garbage into the ocean? Yes. We need to do something to nourish. At least offering a prayer to say, thank you, mother, for giving me this. Yes, yes. And I think that is the problem. My yeah. view is this connection. I don't know if our audience agrees, but this is my view. Yes. So it's in because in a way we could we could say, okay, the mother or Durga probably is punishing us, but it's not. we can say that it's correcting us. Uh, as uh, as a Durga, as a mother, uh, as a straight mother, yeah, who knows what is good for uh, her children, yeah. So in that way, I we can say that uh, this universal mother, the energy has two sides, as you said. One is 
let's say Saraswat and Lakshma, Lakshmi, which is a little bit more soft and nice and loving and nurturing and teaching and so on. And then we have Durga, which is like, look, this is like that. Don't put your hand in the fire. Yeah. Uh, in order to protect the child, in order to to give uh, the child a, a good direction. Yeah. So, but we can perceive it maybe sometimes as very cruel. Like in the, in the nature, we can see animals are eating each other. You know, so they be very cruel sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, and it's the same somehow in life. You know, so we have this universal mother who is have two coin two sides of one one energy and then we have in a way also our own mother or those who are mothers they also have both sides it's just it's not just one nice side it's both sides that we have yeah? so how can we let's say uh manage these both sides how can we let's say maybe dance between those two aspects of one great mother acceptance it's as simple as that i mean we have the sun but we can't manage the sun all the time there is night there is day we need both we need both there is there is a, there is a nourishing attribute for the sun there is also a nourishing attribute for the night there's a, there is night there is day there is day and night <clears throat> we have to have both the same way we don't expect to have a perfect mother we just have a mother we just have to accept it yeah and the mother will do what is necessary for the child at that time every mother who has more than one child knows that each child is different and has different needs so they have to do it differently i have one very dear student who has uh, two children. One of them is very allergic to certain kinds of food and the other one is not. So she has to make food that is very different for each, each child. She can't say, okay, no, because this child is allergic, we don't do any of these kind of food in the house. No, she makes some kind of food for this child. She makes some kind of food for this child, being very careful not to mix the two. So the mother has to adapt to each child differently. So that's why for us as humans, Mother Nature has one set of rules. For animals, she has another set of rules. For plants, she has another set of rules. Because each child needs something different. We cannot be given the same kind of education. We cannot be given the same kind of nourishment. We cannot be given the same kind of punishment. Yeah. So that's why if an animal is killing another animal, she won't punish that animal because that animal is not necessarily hunting for pleasure. It's hunting because it's hungry. A lion, since we talk about lions today, a lion may hunt a deer, but it eats some of the deer, gives the rest to its family, and then the family of lion and lion kids, they don't eat meat for many days because that is enough for some time. Isn't that the lioness are hunting actually and he's waiting in the shadow? I have no idea. I'm not a lion, so I would not know. But whoever, <laughs> no. whoever, whoever, uh, they don't eat uh, every day three, three pieces of meat. Yeah. They don't eat it for pleasure. They eat it because it's necessary. So the rules they have they for being very cruel is very different from the rules that we have for being very cruel. Yeah. Because our cruelty is is intentionally cruel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's by the There's a very fascinating book that is called um, Sapiens. Ah, uh, Homo sapiens, like that? No, no, Sapien. Okay, Sapiens. It's written by a very interesting man from Israel. Uh. He has basically said every, if you trace the history, everywhere where human beings set foot, Almost all of the species in that place has disappeared within 500 years. So the ecosystem we are inhabiting has so little species left compared to what it was, say, 5,000 years ago. Because we have killed all the other species. That's how destructive human beings are. We are not following the laws of nature. We are so not connected. This great mother, yeah, so that we can 
face the problem. Hear, yeah, hear the, the, the voice, what to do. So Aureli is saying, Kastuba, even if I don't have an affection for mothers, so he experienced the, the other Durga side, maybe, uh, I feel a maternal energy that supports me and she finds it in Shraddha. So this is something that we are actually talking about. Yeah. It's very fascinating that Aureli is saying that because in the commentary to the Shraddha Sutra of uh, Yoga Sutra, Vyasa is describing Shraddha as <clears throat> um, Shraddha is like the responsible mother. Wow, how nice it Shraddha is! Actually. Is yeah. like the responsible mother, and it nourishes and supports the yogi, the practitioner. Because without Shraddha, the practice has no meaning. So it's almost like the mother is the foundation for the practice. Just like I just said earlier, the mother is the foundation for uh, uh, our growth, our prosperity, our nourishment, etc. The exact uh, word that Vyasa is using, I will share it with you. I'm just looking through it. Sa Shraddhahi Janani Iva Kalyani Yoginam Pati Kalyani Janani Iva Shraddha is like an auspicious mother who is nourishing and supporting the yogi, the practitioner. Very nice. So good point, Aureli. And Maria Alejandra Sierra Hernandez, she is saying Panchamaya. Earth Mother is the Earth Mother for Native Americans, for South American Natives, she is saying. Pachamama. 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 Yeah, Pachamama. Pachamama. Exactly, Pachamama. So, uh, as we see, this energy, the, this ancient energy is with us from forever, yeah? It's actually <laughs> created us, yeah? We have Gaia, then we have, of course, Virgin Mary in Christianity, Pachamama, uh, Shakti, Sarasvati, Lakshmi, Durga, nature itself. And it's almost in every tale, in every country in the world. So it's deeply embedded in our psyche. So do mothers now, in these modern times, know how to connect to that energy when they become mothers? This may be more open is this they that do they know how to connect to this ancient and um, i think we are at a point where there is some kind of reversal that is happening i would like to say it this way in the past mothers were very much in contact with this motherly nature and then came google and internet and all that crap and then mothers were kind of distancing themselves from that nature because they thought information was king. Information is not king. It's wisdom and clarity that is more important than information. So what I, what I feel is that many people saw that this disconnection from the motherly instinct was not going well. And then there was a plethora of books and publications that started to come about how to help people reconnect with their motherliness and things like that, which is as simple as just listening to your intuition, that's it. And so what I'm seeing is we are at a point where the reversal is happening. Many people, many women are trying to go back to their essential nature. And I think this is a very, very positive sign. I see this in many of my students who are amazing mothers who are no longer relying on Google-like information, social media information, social media platforms where horrible things are shared and fake news is shared, rather going back to their intuition, rather than going back to their messages that their body and emotions are telling them what to do. If their body is telling them to rest, then they rest, rather than look up at the internet and say, so, you know, mother tend to lose weight, so she has to jog. Oh, sorry, mother tend to gain weight, so she has to jog 400 miles a day. So they don't do that anymore. They just pay attention to the body. And they just pay attention to their intuition. And I think this change is happening. And I will only hope that it will happen more and more in the world in the future. 
Yes. So, so the mother should uh, be careful and uh, aware of uh, not being uh, not being uh, so stuck in the social media in Google. But maybe you know, listen to the grandmother, uh, or maybe listen to, uh, and of course, the inner intuition, as you said, is far more uh, correct or far more. Uh, good for her and for the child because you you actually said that uh, each child is different as we know so this connection for the child is uh, 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 extremely important yeah so it's like I will, uh, yeah. I will give you a quotable quote now you said the mother have to be more careful actually not mother don't have to be careful mother has to be full of care not careful but full of care Oh, how nice, exactly. Full of care. But coming back to this point about care, I just want to go back to that point that I made. Yeah. As mother being the first teacher. Now, how do you teach a concept like care? Only by caring, as an example. You cannot teach care in a classroom. Yeah. Through a set of rules. You teach it through examples. So if a mother starts caring about her body, herself, her mind, her health, that's a great lesson to the child about how to care for themselves. So that's all the mother has to do. She has to start caring more about her health, her dignity, her grace, and express it and that is enough to teach somebody else rather than teach through words so that's all a shift ne is needed we don't need mothers to be more careful we just need mothers to be full of care first for themselves and then automatically it will come to the others because one of the things that i've seen with the kalyani janani the auspicious mother the auspicious mother is an unconditional giver. The mothership always gives. See how much damage we do to this earth. But the earth continues to keep giving us more and more nourishment. She never withdraws support for us. She never stops our food supply. She never stops our nourishment supply. She never stops our water supply. She may redirect it one way or the other but it's always there for us. Yes. So if the mother starts to care, then everybody is cared for. But if the mother stops caring for herself, then everybody dies because if we kill the mother, we all die. That's what we are doing. We're trying to kill the nature, making it all into buildings. We all die because we can't live off buildings. We live off plants, animals, earth, water, everything that is part of the earth. So I think that is what we need to do. And that is what Mother Earth is teaching. A, nourish yourself. Mm -hmm. And the Mother Earth is putting boundaries to us saying, you know, don't abuse me. And the same way we must not allow our children to abuse the mother or father, in fact, mm -hmm. any, any parent for that matter. Mm -hmm. It's a very good point, yeah. So it's important that, let's say, modern mothers, uh, parents, that they don't have, that they know that they don't have to be perfect. Like you said before, uh, the mother needs to lose the weight and we all saw how, I don't know, a perfect actress just gave birth and she was completely skinny after six weeks, for example, or that the child is perfect going into you know several uh, afternoon classes but that there is just that they are just good enough that they do their best so how can they let's say be helped or how can they help themselves in order to feel that to let that go of that uh, expectations of the society to be such a perfect mother See, that idea, I think, of a perfect body for the woman, etc., I think was a way the men put into the minds of the psyche of the woman to somehow 
belittle the woman and control the woman. Yes, I and agree. I think women should not allow that. Women, there are many women who think that their body shape is not good, but their husbands look like fat idiots. But the husband is telling the woman, hey, you, look, you need to lose weight and you need to be this, you need to be that. That's not right. And that, that I the women, that women do it to each other and the men are sitting back and laughing because they say, you know what, we've done our job, now let the women bitch about each other. That's really bad because that's one way of controlling yes. the female that was introduced and that's very bad. I mean, there's nobody with a perfect body, there's nobody with a perfect mind, there's nobody with a perfect anything. We are all different and that is why it's so wonderful because the body is not going to be stay the same throughout our life it's going to keep changing so it's perfect as it is as we are growing we don't need to change i mean we have to change weight or this or that if there are health concerns yeah but not appearance concerns but somehow we have become so disconnected and shallow that we have made into this into this issue we made this into this issue. Uh, that's why I really admire that picture that you put of the 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 lady in the top, which is not really a, a perfect archetype of what uh, women should look at. And this is why I've told you, and I've told many uh, many of my students before. I like to photograph old people because they're so beautiful. They're not perfect. But look at this lady in the temple today. I made a photo of this lady. Wow. <laughs> look how beautiful she is. She's really and, beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And so, so. This is not a perfect archetype of a model in a news magazine, but she's worthy of respect because the body is changing. And she's, I think, almost 90 years old. Since she was in the temple today. She's still coming to the temple. She's still praying to the same God. Probably she's been doing that since she was a child. Her body has changed, but her spirit has not. So this is where the connection of the spirit is more important because the body is changing. And my dear friend Sarah knows, who says she has a beautiful expression. She knows that I like to take pictures of old people. And this old lady, I just told her how beautiful she was and she was she was thinking I was joking and I said no no I said you know you are even fit enough to get married now <laughs> because so many men will be attracted to you that's when she smiled <laughs> because society ignores such people thinking that they are not good enough for what is normal things in life it doesn't mean that marriage is a normal thing it's just a joke that I made with her to have conversation but Many such people are isolated because it's a way that the male dominant energy is trying to control the woman and that is not appropriate, that is not healthy. And when women buy into that story, that is not healthy for the woman to buy into that story. Yes. What, yeah, but what about, let's say, good enough mother or that the mother is doing the best in uh, raising her child? So, for example, I know quite a lot of mothers that are, uh, let's say, you know, so focused on their child's uh, uh, school, on what they are doing in the afternoon, how good he was at, uh, let's say, soccer game, how good he was in uh, chemistry class. You know, it's like all that uh, uh, putting a child into some sort of, of, of a box and then he needs to to perform perfectly against all this perfection, all this wow, you know. Any of these forms of perfection is just ego. It's not reality. It's not reality, yeah. So, it's ego. That's it. Yeah. So what would you advise, for example, in order for a mother who has a child or maybe more children, yeah, to really connect with which one of them through the universal archetype, through the universal energy of the mother. If the mother is connected to herself, she will know exactly how to connect with each of these children, how much food is needed to each of these children, how much nourishment is needed through appreciation, through emotional support, and things like that, and it will work. 
And sometimes life is not perfect. Some children may need more attention than others. Like for example, when I was born, I was born a normal child. I had not any particular problem, but I have an elder brother who is mentally handicapped. So my mother had to spend a lot of time taking care of him compared to me. So I could complain all my life saying, oh, my mother was not giving me equal time, equal time. But that's not the point. If the point of equity is that I was given what I needed, my I can call, I can say that even today I have a brother. If he was not given that attention at that time, I would not have a brother. So if I did not have this trauma, I would have had another trauma. So yeah. life is not perfect. We just have to accept what it is and stop complaining about whether, you know, my mother did not give me enough attention or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, maybe, maybe it is a fact and we just have to accept it. And we need to learn that, okay, how did that hurt me? What can I learn from it? And how can I make sure that I transmit the understanding of what I've learned from it yeah. to my children, to my next generation? Okay. So I'm not treating my daughter the same way my father treated me. Yeah, I understood wh what my father did to me. I learned from what it is. I took the positives, let go of the negatives, and I'm trying to represent what best I can, which still I make mistakes because I'm a human. So obviously there is no class I learned in school or university being how to be a good father, or there is no class in the school or university which says, how to be a good mother. And these are things that are not taught, but that are very important to be talked about, to be taught. And I would think that that's much more useful than some crazy fifth language in school or sixth language in school or something like complex algebra or complex whatever mathematics, which we don't even remember after graduating from school. I think this is where we need to remind ourselves as much as possible we need to remind our friends, we need to remember our to remind our students and our family members that there's no such thing called perfection. Yeah. In anything. Exactly. Whether it's perfect mother, perfect father, perfect child, perfect friend, perfect lover, it's just not there. Yes, and we do our best, yeah. So we have a question for you, Shaila. Ja, what is the most important aspect a mother can give her children? Ayo, Amma Ji is asking a man this question. Amma Ji, Shaila Ja, you are killing me. Well, she's just checking you, you know. She's what? <laughs> she's checking you, if you know. She's checking me. I don't know. I, I can fail this exam because I've never been a mother. <laughs> I think the greatest gift I feel any parent can give the child here, I don't see a separation between father and mother, yeah. is the example of self-care. Because if we don't self-care, because care is a very broad term that includes things like respect, grace, space, time, boundaries, ethics, values, education, wisdom, etc. Care is a very broad term. So self-care includes self-boundaries, self-respect, uh, self-dignity, the concept of personal space, personal time. All these are so important messages that mother and father should take for themselves so that they become an example for the child. It doesn't mean at the cost of the child, ignoring the child. Yeah. It's a mother takes care of two or three children. She needs some rest. So she cannot work like crazy. She just has to tell the children, look, I need some rest. Now is the time you should not disturb me. I need half an hour and you're not coming to my room to okay. disturb me at this time. Mm -hmm. And put that boundary very clearly. It doesn't mean the mother does not love the child anymore. Actually, the mother loves the child even more because yes. that little space and time will give her even more energy to be taking care of them better when she goes back to them. And that is how we need to do. That's the greatest example we can give. 
So an African proverb says, <clears throat> it takes a village to raise a child. That means that the entire community of people must uh, interact with children for uh, those children to experience and grow in a safe and healthy environment. So now it's not like that anymore. Usually we have just mother and a father, or maybe just mother, maybe just father. How should the society change in order to provide a healthy environment for the mother and the child, the children? It's also an Indian saying. It's not just Africa. We also believe this in India. Wow. I mean, we, I think parts of our Indian society still follows this, still follows this. Nice. I was very, very, very lucky to grow up in such a society. When I was young, we did not have so-called nuclear families so much. We were still in joint families. So my father and my mother, were, when we had three children, we were not only living with my parents, but also my grandparents were there. And for some time, a few of my cousins lived with us. Sometime my auntie lived with us, my auntie and uncle lived with us. So we were a bigger family. And it was very, very wonderful because sometimes when we needed the love of the mother, but the mother was busy taking care of my brother, for example, my auntie would take care of me. My grandmother would take care of me. My elder cousin would take care of me. So in some way, they that whatever was lacking was somehow filled up by the other members of the family. And we, we appreciate that so much. And today when I was going with my cousin, we were talking about the value of this so much because we all grew up together. We would visit each other. They would come and stay over and things like that. In modern society, we have become more and more isolated, not just within, you know, within our families, but even inside our families. Yeah. Children are communicating, brothers and sisters are communicating who are in the same room through phone, through WhatsApp or WeChat or, you know, Signal or Telegram, not live face to face. So what we need to do is bring back the concept of family time. Take some time like in the past. That's where all these things were social gatherings. The Jews have the Shabbat. Every Friday they would gather the whole family together to eat together, sing and pray together. That was not a religious function. It was a social thing. Yeah. The similar procedures exist in Christianity. Similar procedures exist in Islam. Similar procedures exist in Hinduism. We all have the concept called a social event, a function, we would say. Yeah. That's why we have so many holidays. Everybody would gather together. And I think that would bring us all together, at least for a short time. And if we can't do it within our family members, because we are living in very far away places, we can start doing it together within our neighborhood. Because now friends are the new family. Exactly. Yeah. And, and now we are even more isolated. And uh, as you said, on social media, check, chat, chatting through screens that we talked uh, a lot about also uh, in our previous interview about you can check uh we already covered that topic uh so we will just take uh, this comment that uh, malar really is uh, saying and uh, then uh, we're going to conclude uh, the this interview because it's already one hour again it runs so fast oh. So Malarville is saying we should not analyze uh, whether we are good parents, just do our responsibility without expectation that the child has to pay back to the parents in any way. So we just guide them accordingly by being a good parent, yes, good enough parent, we said. So we educate uh, to our children to be good parents one day. So it's a circle. It's exactly, yes, what, what we are talking about. Very good, yeah. So, like, and she's uh, commenting uh, also that uh, it's uh, no expectation. So, with this unconditional love, yeah. So, yeah, but this is a debatable topic, unconditional love, because yeah, people don't understand it very correctly what this means, and uh, it's. I think I would not like to use that term very casually because it really doesn't make the same sense as 
what really it means and that is the problem because love is not only from mother to child love is a two way direction if mother has to give unconditional love to the child the child has to give unconditional love to the mother as well it's not it's not a contract it's just the way energy works yes and it's, it's just so this is a very it's a it's a word unconditional love that modern new age people like to use a lot without knowing really the depth so it's a debatable topic and we need to clarify it probably what she means is self could be a whole topic of discussion for some other time yes exactly so maybe just you know connect uh, to connect to try to connect to yourself and by that connect to the to the energy of universe of mother and have in mind all the Saraswati, Lakshmi and Durga qualities, yeah? yeah. So I think, and just not expect to be perfect and just say, I'm doing my best, I'm good enough. And this is a self-care also, yeah? Unconditional love starts with us. We have to give ourselves unconditional love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise we can't give somebody else. Exactly, and this is another topic. <laughs> uh so um yes we are now concluded thank you very much dear friends thank you very much dr kasuba desikachar you can probably guess my dear friends what we are going to talk about the next uh in our next interview in uh, uh, yeah so probably the fathers would be uh, our great topic the great father Wow. I can talk about fathers because I've been a father. Yes, and my small disclaimer will be I'm not a father. <laughs> I will never be. So this would That's be very interesting. Katya. I'm a great mother and a great father. So yes, my dear friends, uh, so we we'll conclude with this uh, great <laughs> quotes of both of us. <laughs> So thank you very much, all of you. Join us in two weeks. Um, do share our our invitations. Do share our interviews. This is how we can spread light uh, towards other people. Also, uh, we would appreciate, and uh, we would also appreciate uh, Kostuba if you can chant to us also to end this interview. So thank you very much, my dear friends. Om Tachayo Rabrani Mahi Gatai Yajnaya Gatai Yajnapataye Daive Swasthirasthunaha Swasthiramanushebhyaha Urdhvanjighatu bheshajam Shanno asta dvipade Shanchatushpade Om Shante Shante Shanti Namaste friends and please as I said the disclaimer if I have said anything that is not consistent with what you believe in it's okay I'm not perfect especially a perfect mother and so please forgive me if I've said something that has disturbed you in one way or the other. I just talked through the experiences I've had with my own mother as well as 
many of my students who are wonderful mothers. Namaste, friends. Namaste.